And we're back. Howdy y'all. This is Ethan Bonreal back again with the second part of the Brofinder date with Jake. And this time around, we're going to go ahead and get to make a pretty interesting decision. We can either choose to be crushed to death or be a part of an erotic human centipede. So if you're confused by that, just keep watching. Uh, everything's going to reveal itself in due time. But before I get ahead of myself, let's go ahead and kick off the video. So... <clears throat> You take a moment to enjoy the view. Jake, who seems a little more relaxed, peers tentatively over your shoulder to catch a peek. You know, since we're on a date, why don't we talk about dating stuff? You know, like the basics. What are you into and what are you looking for? All that good stuff. So, uh, after experimenting a bit, it looks like none of these choices actually lock you out of the ending with the sex scene. What I recommend picking, however, is honestly no idea, because that's what I pick, and it just goes with um, my general trait earlier of being a little bit indecisive or not really knowing what I want, so we're really keeping our options open, and that's pretty swell. So I just came out recently, I don't really have much experience with this. Oh, that's so cool. Hopefully it's been a good experience for you. Uh, well, we did literally almost get murdered on our last date, so I'm going to say it's been pretty rough. You know, I really don't know what I'm doing. You know, I'm still figuring things out myself. Don't stress out about it too much. Everyone finds their own path. Well, what about you? What are you looking for? Well... Yikes. That doesn't sound good. Well, I hope they get here soon. Going back to your question. I had my first crush on a boy when I was 10, but I didn't figure it out until high school, and I've always really been pretty shy when meeting people. But I am a very sex-positive person. I kind of feel like he should be wiggling his eyebrows when he says that. Uh, I'm also pro-open relationship and polyamory. That's interesting. So this is actually an extremely important decision. So if you choose this, this will immediately lock you out of any endings where you have sex with him. Sad but true. So you really got to pick either of these two. I recommend picking this one though. I'd say sign me up, but I have enough trouble finding just one guy. Hey, I do too. Just because I like it doesn't mean I'm any good at it. It's not for everyone, but honestly neither is monogamy, though a lot of people try to fit that in a box. I mean, I don't really have a lot of experience with relationships in general, so take what you will of my opinion, but this just seems like a really alien concept to me. What about it is so appealing exactly? Well, listen, how much time you got, kid? Well, about three hours. Okay, get comfortable. He takes a deep breath. The way I see it, people are conditioned only to see monogamous romantic relationships as legitimate. We make all sorts of assumptions about what real relationships look like. Dot dot dot. Man, that really did not sound good. But anyway, back to the matter at hand. I think we also have the capacity to love multiple people, and we already do that, though there clearly are many different types of ways of loving and different types of love. To paraphrase one of my favorite Star Trek characters, when you love someone, you'll never feel the same way about anyone else. It's different every time. Does that resonate with you at all? I mean, sure, that sounds all cool in theory, but what about jealousy? Isn't that a big thing? You know, in my last relationship, I told my partner that he's welcome to fool around with other guys as long as he told me about it, and I actually kinda enjoyed hearing about his exploits. Maybe that's you, but it definitely can't be like that for everyone, right? Dot dot, man, this elevator is doing the most, holy shit. Absolutely, jealousy can be really destructive, but only if you let it. I think its power comes from the fact that we don't really acknowledge it. We don't bring it up honestly or examine it out in the open. Instead, we let it lurk and fester in the shadows. It's a non-starter for me if someone is going out to act jealous rather than try to talk to me about it and tell me what they're feeling so that I can help them come up with solutions. So, uh, again, anything 
that basically is anti-polyamory is going to lock you out of the sex endings with this dude. So what I recommend doing is saying, it sounds like so much hinges on the ability to communicate. Yeah, and that's true for any relationship. Clear, honest communication is crucial for any relationship to work. And really, the hardest part of that is having a clear and honest relationship with yourself first. Ooh, man, Jake with the life advice. Once you're able to do that, then start having honest conversations with people you love. Anything else is a piece of cake. Hmm. Again, if you say, I don't think it's for me, that locks you out of the sex ending. So, uh, either one works. I'm going to go with interesting. The conversation hits a pause. The two of you take a moment to stare at one another. So, the decision we need to make is fairly obvious here. Uh, things are going pretty well on this date, and really the only thing holding us back from getting to the restaurant and then having our asses filled with dim sum is this goddamn elevator. So, that means in order for us to succeed on this date, we probably need to defeat this elevator boss. So, we're going to jump on it. And he does not look pleased by our decision. Oh, hell no. You are not doing this. Look, if we both jumped hard enough, we could probably dislodge whatever's got this thing stuck. That is not how it works. No, 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 no. Jake reaches for the service hatch at the top of the elevator car and begins loosening the screws. You continue jumping like a kangaroo. What are you doing? Getting the hell out of here, you weirdo. Look, I wouldn't do that if I were you. That seems pretty dangerous. As you hop and stamp at the elevator floor, Jake frees the screws and pops the hatch open. He begins lifting himself up and out. Don't go, I think I've almost got it. You watch Jake's feet disappear above you. His face pops back into view. It was lovely meeting you, but I really need to get the fuck out of here. I swear, I can feel this thing loosening up. Just hang on a second. But Jake's already gone. You're not sure what the inside of an elevator shaft looks like, but you can imagine there are many places to go. Jake's lack of faith and quick departure compel you to further try to prove your point. You launch yourself high into the air, do a flip, and slam your feet hard against the elevator floor. You hear a clunk. You hear that? Holy shit, get out of here! You feel the elevator car starting to move. I knew it would work. And in a sense, it did work. You feel the sensation of downward movement. Then more downward movement. You seem to be accelerating. Ha! Who's the weirdo now? We're free! You turn towards the glass outside the elevator. You very quickly notice that your rate of descent is quite fast, and actually getting faster by the moment. The view of Orlin hastily disappears before you as you plummet. You have time for one final thought before your impending demise. Huh. I guess that thing about downward momentum is true. So this actually makes no sense with the route that we went on, but you can actually have a discussion with Jake about physics, depending on the choices that you make earlier in the date, uh, and you imply that it would be totally safe to jump on up and down on the elevator, and then he schools you and tells you how momentum works. But... That don't matter now, because uh, the elevator car slams into the ground, crumpling and crushing you in the process, and you fucking die. You knew. Um, so, the end. Um, basically, if you do jump up and down like they tell you explicitly not to do several times, uh, you end up killing yourself. Um, so it's really the coming out on top no mercy run, because you absolutely, definitely got yourself and probably Jake killed by doing that. But, luckily, we have the power to uh, go back in time here. So we are going to redo this and make the correct decision. We're going to kiss him. You look up at his sparkling eyes, fighting to calm your nerves. Don't hesitate. This is the perfect place for a kiss. Leaning over, you kiss him full on the lips. His eyes grow wide for a second before he pushes back into you, his lips massaging yours. The kiss is so wonderful, you don't want it to stop. But on the other hand, your boner urges you to take this even further. So, I'm not going to urge you to take it forward, because 
we're gonna cut the video here. <laughs> um, basically, they're about to have sex up in this elevator, if you can't tell. And I, if you can, if you're old enough or feel comfortable doing it, I recommend checking out these sex scenes, um, because they're some of the most interesting ones in the game so far. Uh, and again, there are multiple possible sex endings with this. But, in the meantime, I'll meet y'all back in a bit. Don't forget to check the description for the link to the Not Safe for Work scenes and BRB. Alright, so we're back. So let's go ahead and just jump straight into this. Gasping and panting, the four of you unhook from each other and attempt to gather yourselves. You pull your pants back up. Spoilers, that's a clue at what happened, friends. Um, so, that was definitely unexpected. You guys are true heroes. We're just doing our job, citizen. Anybody in our position would have done the same. Ah, Sven. Always the humble one. But it's days like today that make me love this job. Alright, so y'all might be wondering uh, why the hell we are leaving an elevator after zipping up our pants with two firemen who were in no way in the scenes prior to this. Um, and why we are making innuendo -y banter on our way out of this elevator. Well, like I said, imagine a human centipede, but like in a sexual way. Uh, a sexual way with two firemen that we just met. Uh, you know, so basic date, first date activities, basically. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Watch the Not Safe for Work link if you want to see more. Anyway, the firemen help you out and into the stairway. Oh, they're gentlemen. That's nice of them where the four of you go up to the restaurant. Thank God, I couldn't make it another night of eating beans and weenies at the firehouse. Hey, my beans and weenies are awesome. Okay, okay, sorry. The four of you enjoy the rest of the night consuming copious quantities of food, managing to clear out the buffet table twice. The buffet staff glare at the four of you with accusatory looks. So... We're going to be polite. We did just kind of bring four people here um, on our glorious polyamorous, now polyamorous date. So we're going to go ahead and leave the buffet. The four of you rub your bellies slowly and get up and unbuckle your belts. You waddle out of the buffet knowing that you'll never forget this evening. Your date has ended. So I think that was a little bit of kind of like so much was happening on that date like we got caught in the elevator we learned about jake we talked to him and like in the final few moments of this date like the firemen kind of steal the show however again if you opt out of the polyamorous ending where you say you're not interested in polyamory or you're not interested in sharing basically uh, you will have a one-on-one -on -one date with Jake, and you can choose to do that, and you do talk to him at the end. But, if you do that, you don't end up having sex, so... Take and pick what you get, basically. In any case, uh, thank y'all for watching, I appreciate it. So, you may or may not realize, I am out of Rofinder dates to do. That means I'm going to switch back to doing Alex's storyline pretty soon. Probably gonna... M I'm debating on doing Ian at the same time and alternating between the two. Tell me in the comments what you think I should do. Um, in any case, I am going to try to put out an Alex video sometime. Well, it's already it's Wednesday. I'll try to do one by Friday. But finally, uh, don't forget to check out my other videos if you're interested. Uh, I recommend checking out my Oracle of Ages videos, or Oracle of Seasons, rather. Oracle of Seasons videos just because they are really fucking funny and I love them. But I won't wax poetic on that. Y'all can decide yourselves if you're interested enough in seeing them. In the meantime, in the between time, I'm Ethan Bonreal and I'm Ethan Bon Gone. So see you, nerds.